you know, I just felt we were in a position where um, I wasn't afraid to speak out and and kind of call it as I see it. And and we had had attempted over the last couple of years to go through the proper channels to get some of this stuff changed, and it and it just hasn't. Curling now enters the Sports Weekend Spotlight. Listen, congratulations uh, on yet another win. I was thinking about all the times you've donned the Maple Leaf throughout your career. Where would you rank this international event, Brad, in all of the ones you've uh, competed at over your illustrious career? Um, you know, that's that's a tough question. Obviously, when you compare it to a, an Olympic Games or a World Championship, it's certainly not at that level. But you know, anytime you get to represent your country, wear the Maple Leaf and, and go out there and, and play against the other countries, it's it's an honor and a privilege. And and to come out on top, uh, you know, we're, we're pretty happy with it. There were some good teams there, Corey Dropkin, Yannick Asawa, and the Korean team, obviously, a uh, good, good bunch of players. So, you know, it's not easy, um, but we uh, fortunately pulled it out. Uh, the Pan Continental Championships, uh, you've been at both of them now. Uh, it started in an arena setting. Now it was at the curling club. You and I talked. A lot of people know about how you were feeling. Um, what have you heard in the days since, Brad, when, when you didn't hold back uh, and you had some strong feelings about it? Yeah, I've, I've heard a lot. Um, I've got a, a really good response from the players that were at the event. I think of the the other seven teams that we competed against, six of them came up and, and really thanked me and, and uh, appreciated the fact that someone spoke out. Uh, so that, that obviously made me feel pretty good. I uh, even had some officials and, and some uh, event staff, the organizing committee come up and the reception has been really positive. And I think the reason it has been is, is there have been a feeling of, of uh, the players being you know, pushed towards the back or a secondary thought at, at these events for a long time. And, and uh, you know, there's also a, a little bit of a fear of speaking out. So some of these teams are, you know, they're worried about their association saying something or the World Curling Federation. And, and uh, you know, I just felt we were in a position where um, I wasn't afraid to speak out and and kind of call it as I see it. And, and we had had attempted over the last couple of years to go through the proper channels to get some of this stuff changed. And it, and it just hasn't. Uh, so, um, yeah, I felt letting people know what we were dealing with, uh, may lead to some change and hopefully, hopefully it will. I know even after I spoke, there were some changes at the event and, and, uh, so at least some of it worked. Uh, in terms of your concerns, I know a lot of people would have read your comments, but but what were some of your concerns? Because as a professional athlete, you show up at an international competition with an expectation that there are going to be things in place to allow you to be your best. And that didn't seem to be the case, Brad. Yeah. So, you know, I want to make it clear, this wasn't just a one-off for us. Like there's there's been years of, of seeing issues uh, playing at world championships and WCF events. Uh, but this one event in particular, we showed up and we weren't able to watch practice, uh, the, the other team practice. Uh, the locker rooms we were changing, um, you know, sharing with the women's teams. And even after we came off after the final, I walked in there and the Korean women's team were in there. So, um, you know, and then you, you add in the fact that there was no area to warm up. So as uh, as athletes that are competing, you know, for your country and competing at an international event, not to have the ability to warm up in the venue and be told that you had to go outside when it was minus one, minus two degrees, just didn't seem appropriate to me. Um, when there was areas in the curling club that could have been used for those things, but instead they decided to use them for for TV purposes or other purposes. So it all, it just felt like the curlers were pushed back and were secondary in, in the whole planning. Uh, and set up by the World Curling Federation. You know, Brad, we're going to have members of the World Curling Federation following you on the broadcast tonight. And and when you describe an atmosphere of some athletes who don't carry the prestige you carry in, in the sport, and you told me yourself you're on the back nine of your career. Um, so when you speak, people listen. But there are people, other athletes, that that don't have that privilege. That That seems concerning to me that this is the atmosphere that exists in curling today. Yeah, it, it's certainly there. I had a really good conversation earlier today with Joe Officer, who is is part of the Athletes Commission. So just so the viewers are aware, there is a, an, an avenue for us as curlers to get to the World Curling Federation. Uh, the wor the problem with it is is not all the curlers are aware that that Jill and, and Tyler George are, are available for, for these calls. The other side is there's only so much 
pull and, and, and ability they, they have to, to change and, and make the decisions necessary. And oftentimes what's happening is the tournament directors go in there and they set up the event the way they see fit. The problem is these tournament directors aren't athletes. They haven't played. They don't know what uh, players need. And, and it certainly is, it feels as though uh, we as players are, are not given any sort of, uh, not given any empathy. Like even when we showed up and, and we talked about the thermal part, like I know the rules are the rules. However, uh, we're put in a curling club when we aren't normally in a curling club and you have to be willing to adjust because the players can't go out there and, and, and freeze because you want us to wear a certain color. Uh, it just, you, you have to adapt and, and not having a player there to, to make those decisions, I think hurts the event from a player standpoint. Hmm. Uh, I was thinking ahead of our conversation that you poured your life into this sport. Um, and I know you, you weren't thrilled with what took place this week. Is your sport, Brad, where you thought it would be in terms of professionalization at this point of your career? When you think back to winning Olympic gold in 2006 at the beginning of all of this, is it where it needs to be in terms of the progression of everything from sponsors to athlete rights to television? No, <laughs> to be to be uh, completely honest, no, it's not. I think, you know, even even a, you know, you take the argument of of wearing our, our brands and our logos at, at national championships. Uh, you know, fighting for locker rooms and in places to warm up. It just seems like we've taken a, a little bit of a step back. Uh, you know, another reason I, I kind of made the the statements that I did and the frustration that we had in in Ottawa when we were. You know, we were given a per diem by the World Curling Federation that only was enough to cover our breakfast. Um, and then at the Pancontinental, there was no per diem. Now, fortunately for us as Canadians, our, our federation, the Curling Canada, covered uh, all of our expenses. But we had countries like Chinese Ta Taipei and Australia that were paying their own expenses and then had to pay for all their meals. Meanwhile, admission was being charged for people to come in and watch. And, and they're coming in to watch... Australian Chinese Taipei play, um, but we can't even give them a sandwich. So there's there's lots of little bit issues that go on there. And, and even in Ottawa last year, there's six, seven, eight thousand people there, and and you had countries that had to go and, and pay out of the pocket to go and, and entertain those people. So I think there's there's a lot of things that need to change in our game. And and I'm disappointed. Uh, I would say over the last number of years that we haven't made the step forward. It's something we have in in certain areas. So I don't want to be across the board, but I think there's some events in in some situations where I thought we would be much further than we are right now. Sure thing. Uh, winding down because I know you're right back out onto the ice at another event at the Slam in Nova Scotia. But uh, I'm thinking specifically about the Pan Continental, and you know, you know, you talk about being a Canadian team and and the sponsorship and the support you've had. And then I think about India, for example, these guys who care deeply about their sport in the B division, um, who in some respects are happy to be at an international event, trying to grow this game. So I, I'm sure you can appreciate that when you look at the pan continental, you have your team and a, and a team like India trying to break into this. Where do we go from here with this specific event? You know, I, 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 I don't know the solution to it. Um, you know, I know there needs to be some changes because even, you know, I spoke on, on a lot of issues. I didn't even touch on the B event, at, you know, at the Pan Continental, which had as many or more issues than what we had. And, and um, you know, I, I think we need to really look at how we qualify teams for Worlds, you know, the whole revenue and business model of all of this. I think there was a decision made without thinking about the whole business aspect of this. And, and I'd be interested to see what, what Graham's comments are later on about that, because I'm not familiar with it. But it certainly seemed like, a, a you know, a bit of a knee jerk reaction to put this event in and really not have a business plan on how they were going to grow it. Because after year one, to, to shrink it immediately, you know, sends sends a little bit of a, a red flag up and, you um, you know, I'm not sure about all that stuff because I haven't been educated on it, but interested to hear it. But my arguments and, and my voice in all this is, is I think we need to we need to put the players on on a, on a higher level than what they are at these events where it feels like the World Curling Federation officials and 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 everybody else is put higher than the players. And, and I think, you know, you being around those events and certainly Colleen would have been a great advocate. Uh, I, you know, she would. Uh, 
she would back me up on it because I've, I've heard from other Canadian team athletes.